ready? No, I think no, Yulia will open. Ma il serio, facevo finta che stiamo parlando. Tanto il cazzo mi sta leggendo. Nadia è accesa. Nadia è il microfono. Per il serio? Ho perso il treno, ma poi... È acceso. All right. Good afternoon to everybody. Sorry, I will be like a walking moderator, I think, because it just... <laughs> to make it the more interactive as possible. So good, good afternoon, everybody, um, ladies and gentlemen. 
distinguished guests, uh, colleagues, friends, I would propose to start and to open this open forum, uh, co-organized by the uh, European Union delegation to the IGF, as well as the Youth IGF movement. So we have a number of dis distinguished guests today uh, with us. We have the members of the uh, European Parliament, as well as the ICANN board. We have a distinguished guest from the Digital French Council. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, very thankful words as well for the European Union delegation to the IGF, who kindly helped us to put uh, this uh, open forum together and he uh, and the, uh, the the whole team actually who helped to uh, throughout the uh, the process as well so very warm warm thanks for being here today with us i think the idea of this open forum is really to have the dialogue between the global uh, players global leaders and the i would say and I'm, i don't afraid this word uh, the youth leaders who are the activists and real leaders uh, from the youth today. So, uh, my name is Julia Morenitz. I'm from, and please, please have a seat with us. I'm Julia Morenitz from the organization called TAC, Together Against Cybercrime International. And we operate the youth IGF movement. Actually, we work on three pillars. And the third pillar of our work is the awareness raising on uh, online safety. And we operate the youth IGF movement since 2011. I would like to present our distinguished guests. We have the um, member of the European Parliament, Mrs. Karen Melcher. So thank you for being with us. We have as well um, Mrs. Alexandra Gize here present. We have a privilege to have Matthew Scherz as well with us and Salva Toko from the Digital French Council. We have also uh, friends from the Portuguese delegation, I can see. <laughs> Thank you for joining. And um, a, a number of other um, great people and young people present in the, in the room. So I have maybe to say a few words about the Youth IGF and Youth IGF movement. As you can see, we have been created in 2011, acted actually by the MAG at this time as well. It stayed a little bit European in Europe. We organized the first meeting with the young people in the same year, and then it stayed a little bit European. Then we went more global uh, in 2016, and today we are present, as you can see, in 35 countries around the world. We have great uh, activists and who became actually leaders uh, present with us here today. We have Junior Sanfleur from Haiti. I don't know if you can identify yourself. Thank you. We have also Innocent from Uganda. We have Swat from Algeria. I don't know if she's here, but maybe she's looking for the room. We have a Portuguese colleague, but he has to, uh, to leave, but we have a very nice message from him. We have Maria from Ukraine, if you can identify yourself, Maria. <laughs> and we have Agita from Indonesia as well, and Michael from Lebanon. And we have a few and a great number of the young people from other countries that I don't know personally, but you will be able to identify yourself as well. So it has been created, as I said, in 2011. In 2016, uh, we really somehow happened to, to become global, present in uh, 36 countries. And by working in these countries, the young leaders, the young activists, actually, they were able to identify four priority areas. These four priority areas have been also identified during these bilateral meetings with the global leaders, with the European Union um, delegation, and the four areas are the following. The online safety, cybersecurity, counterfeited products with the focus on fake medicines online, and the DNS, domain name system. So um, in these all four priorities, they work and organize activities, seminars, but also they went beyond, and actually they organized and um, was able to develop targeted projects. And it's very interesting, I think this, this meeting is really the dialogue between uh, you, the global players, and the young activists today, but also the idea is to to show that actually by coming from scratch, just being a young person interested in these topics and subjects, we can become a real leader and have a real impact. So I will stop there, not to <laughs> bore you more with the, with the opening words, and maybe I will go um, uh, and um, 
will kindly ask the members of the European Parliament for the few uh, key opening words uh, before we go to see the you know, tangible examples from the young people. So, Mrs. Gizzi, or would you, would you like to... Um, Mrs. Melchior, thank you. We'll go with Karen Melchior first. Um, thank you so much for being here and taking your time to be here. I think it's really important that it's not just old people uh, that are here, but we also listen to what is actually the majority of the world population. I, be, I was elected to the European Parliament this year after having been engaged in politics since 2012. I'm, I'm old, I am 39. Uh, I have a career as a diplomat behind me, and I followed what happened both um, with the publication of some cartoons in Denmark that, pro that uh, gave rise to demonstrations uh, around the world, mainly Muslim countries, uh, that were organized by blogs and text messages. And I, as a diplomat at the time, found it very interesting how networks could create movements that governments didn't know what to do with. And with the um, revolutions and uprisings in 2011 in North Africa and the Middle East, this has become even more apparent. And that's what made me engaged in working on digital issues as a politician. And I um, want to make sure that we have an open and free internet that enables citizens to be able to control their governments and hold the authorities to account, but that we do not allow um, citizens and consumers to be subjects of mass surveillance, both in a commercial uh, but also at a state level. So it's, um, that's sort of one of the main issues that I want to be working on um, politically, but also to make sure that we use the, the networks and the innovation that the internet provides to use it for innovation and that we don't over-regulate it in a way that protects old businesses and business models. Um, and that's a challenge in these days because, well, both of the things are a challenge in these. There is a weird echo. Is that, maybe it's just me. It's real, it's the room. Um, because the more regulation we have, the more I feel states and governments want to use it to regulate their citizens and use regulation as an excuse for cracking down on access to information and uh, for democratic dialogue. And the more we see regulation also being used by big businesses and rights holders to protect their business models and stop free and fair competition. And I'm looking forward to your input and dialogue with you. Yes, hello, my name is Alexandra Gies. I'm a newly elected member of the parliament. I'm a little older than Karen. I have a background in languages as a simultaneous interpreter, but I also studied political science and sociology. And um, I've been involved with politics for the past two years and before with civil society organizations living in different countries of Europe. Um, and I was mainly involved, involved in a very different sector with women's rights and migrants' rights in Europe. And then at a certain point, I got really interested in the digital sector because I realized that what is going on in the digital world strongly impacts these two groups of people and now also the way our democracy works. So I'm quite interested in platform regulation and media and um, also in artificial intelligence, except, uh, especially um, in so far as bias might be a problem for certain groups of people, basically everybody who's not male, white, and rich, so the majority of the population, and those are usually also the people who are not at the table when decisions on uh, platform regulation or an artificial intelligence are taken. And therefore, I really welcome having the possibility to meet you. Um, one thing that also um, is a motivation for me to be in politics is to take the voice of very ordinary people. I wasn't a politician before, I'm also a mother of three, 
And it's, I think it's very important that we see the digital work not as a place that should be regulated only by experts. Because now when you talk about European um, regulation, it's basically politicians. And then when experts are heard, they're basically people from the industry and a little bit from academia, where by academia is starting to be very strongly influenced by the industry as well. And one thing I really would like to find out how to uh, make people participate more in the digital world in general and especially in the regulation. And therefore, I would be very interested in hearing what, you, what, what your message is for us to take us back to the European Parliament, what your questions are, your concerns are. Therefore, I stop here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I think we have a lot of subjects to discuss, and I think um, you have this. We have all this privilege of a very open dialogue as well, like face to face. So this is the place also to make your statement. Um, uh, Mechi, would you like to to give a few opening words as well from ICANN board? Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm Matthew Shears. I'm on the ICANN board. I'm uh, old by any measure on this uh, on these tables here. Um, before I joined the ICANN board, I spent uh, five, six years working in civil society. I joined the ICANN community as a member of the non-commercial stakeholders group, so I'm... Um, many of what... much of what's been said resonates very much with me. Um, and before that, I worked in... Uh, in technology on the technology sector and for business so very much a hybrid and um, I'll leave it to that but I do want to introduce another board member who's sitting over here Tripti Sinha so in case there are questions I can't ask she might be able to thank you so much Salva maybe you can also say us a few words from the uh, French Digital Council and I know you have also a great experience working uh, outside of France as well and uh, please you're welcome let me explain. <laughs> um, so, so I'm Salwa, Salwa Toko. Um, I'm the chairwoman of the French Digital Council, which uh, basically is an, an advisory board named by the government, but an independent one, and I insist on the independency. <laughs> We're 30 members from the civil society, um, economic world, and academic and researcher, um, trying to help French government and institutions about um, policies, makings about digital issues. But I'm also, and why Yulia invited me here, and thank you very much, um, I'm also the chairwoman of a um, French national NGO named Become Tech, aiming to fight the gender gap in IT since a little bit like six years now, first in France, and um, trying to develop the program um, in Africa, uh, because as you noticed, I'm a little bit mixed, so very interested in what's happening in Africa. And I used to, to work, to work in, uh, in West Africa. Uh, and I'm not that young, just to say so. <laughs> um, and, and for me, I have a lot of hope in the, um, the, the next generation. Um, and what I'm working on with um, all the, the girls ambassadors of my NGO and what I'm trying to implement in the French Digital Council is to really have the here of the next generation, the junior ones, who are never consulted um, about all the issues that you are treating right now and are very important. Because for me, even when we are talking about regulation, for example, which is one of the problems we are treating here um, at the French Digital Council, for me, it will be totally really not useful to try to put regulation that won't be understood by the next generation. For me, the next generation should be totally associated to what we are discussing, discussing now and to make them understand that they will play a major role in the future. Thank you, Salva. I think it's a, it's a great, well, you all like raised great words. Um, in order to go to the, and turn to the young uh, representatives now. And uh, quite often, actually, I think when we speak about 
uh, the young in the, you know, in the internet governance uh, sphere were like, well, a number of people tend to say, well, it's just young people, you know, discussing youth issues uh, and among themselves. Um, and nothing happens afterwards. Actually, I think what we are trying to achieve today is to show and to demonstrate that we can also, the young people can discuss between them, but then they can take these recommendations and just try to implement or to develop targeted and great projects as well. And we would like to bring a few, um, you know, a few statements and a few examples of this now. Maybe to start with Europe, uh, with Portugal, we have, um, um, uh, amazing, actually, amazing leader there in Portugal. He joined uh, the youth IGF like a few months ago and already developing great things. He's not here, but we have super short message from him, a video message. So I would, uh, li I would like to ask maybe our charming Kagita to put this video message and then we will go to um, uh, non-European, uh, you know, uh, perspectives as well. Thank you. In Portugal. Hello everyone, my name is João Pedro, I'm from Portugal and recently, well since September, joined the Youth IGF movement under the Lusophone chapter oriented for young people who speak the Portuguese language. My main action so far leading the chapter was contributing to the children's rights awareness sessions happening in the Azores archipelago. My focus was on online rights and parental support for better internet usage. These sessions are coordinated by the Azorian Commissariat for Childhood. So far, we have reached out to more than 2,000 children and 500 community members, but they are still happening. This is a great best practice example for local engagement under a unified regional strategy. Well, Hello, was... everyone. My name is... This was his message, I think, from Portugal, and we would like to, um, to also to thank Portuguese colleagues who are helping a lot to make this happen. Um, you know, as he said a few months ago, he joined, and already they are making amazing activities. But I, I would like now to stay and still stay in Europe and go to Ukraine, uh, maybe, and to give the floor to, uh, for, the, for the example to Maria, um, so he can, she can, you know, present you in a, in a few minutes your perspective as well, Maria. Um, hello everyone, nice to have you here today, thank you for coming, great our presentation. Um, my name is Maria Kornietz, I'm a USIGF Movement Ambassador in Ukraine. To give you a little bit of my background, uh, I did a master's degree in international economic relations, uh, but then I decided to study computer science and right now I'm a, a blockchain developer. Um, so I'm here today to tell you a little bit what we're doing as USIGF movement, uh, particularly in one of our pillars that is cyber security. So um, there are two like landmark dates um, when we conduct the cyber security events like um, in our network of ambassadors. First one is uh, Safer Internet Day in February and the second one is a cybersecurity month. So I will tell you about what we do, like briefly, like in a few minutes, uh, what we do on these days. Yeah, uh, so first is Safer Internet Day. As you probably all know, Safer Internet Day, um, Safer Internet Day is a global campaign uh, supported by European Commission to bring in better internet policies. Um, well, so basically, um, what was our achievement in this sphere uh, is that we brought Safer Internet Day to new countries just this year. Uh, in many countries, uh, the Safer Internet Day was celebrated, was conducted by our ambassadors for the first time. Uh, they are countries like, for example, Algeria, uh, sorry, <laughs> Algeria Haiti, uh, South Africa, and there is the list of the countries. Um, well, yeah, uh, basically these events are conducted in schools or universities. They could also be some online campaigns, uh, or like in Mali, or for example in, uh, in Croatia, we had also our ambassadors speaking on national television on what we're doing. Yeah, so here you can see some pictures. Uh, 
So yeah, and uh, cybersecurity months conducted in October. Well, uh, once again, what is our added value? Is that initially cybersecurity months was a European cybersecurity months. I mean, it was not global. But what we did is that we brought it like worldwide on uh, how four continents. It was Europe, Asia, Africa, and uh, Latin America. Uh, so to give you an example, oh, well, yeah, pictures, pictures. Uh, to give you an example, for example, I was conducting the event in Ukraine. Uh, how did I come up with the idea? Um, I was writing this research paper on hybrid threats. It's like between political science and cybersecurity. And there's also a big problem in Ukraine because I was, as I was writing this paper, I was researching the cybersecurity like violations within the last five years. And it was startling how bad the problem was. And I also faced that it was a problem in Ukraine and that in Ukraine, at the same time, there was a lack of cybersecurity professionals and there was a big gap. So I decided to conduct like a big lecture to gather as many young people as I could and to, sh well, young uh, IT students to show them um, how they can uh, like uh, go to cybersecurity uh, to like fill this gap. And this was like the idea of event I had, well, to give you an example. So yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this is briefly um, on our activities. And thank you. Thank you so much, Maria. I think it was it was amazing, um, amazing presentation. And I have to say that um, this priority, how to involve young people and how to give the role of to the young, um, uh, you know, on uh, in the field of cybersecurity and online safety, it was one of the main recommendations that came out from the this kind of. Um, um, meetings and open forum 2016 and from 2016 to today we worked hard while well, they work hard on how they can make something tangible just not not to hear afterwards well young people they just discuss between them but they also you know go and do things so and another recommendation it was how we can you know approach a very critical point as well. As you know, there is a big problem of fake, uh, well, counterfeited products online, specifically in the, in the global south of fake medicine. So I, I will give floor to our, to Michel from Lebanon and he will uh, tell his story, Michel. Hello, I'm Michel Chamez, uh, the ambassador of Fuse IGF in Lebanon. Uh, I work as a researcher uh, in the Digital Humanities Center at the University of Valamand. I'm also a legal IT expert in the Lebanese courts. Uh, we started, uh, we are active in Lebanon since to the, uh, 2017 as an ambassador of US IGF. We have uh, organized several uh, events like uh, workshops, seminars, and awareness campaign. Uh, our main focus is on cybersecurity. We are targeting uh, young leaders from NGOs, but also children and uh, their parents. So uh, now I want to present one of uh, the best events this year. It was on the occasion of the World uh, Counterfeiting Products Online. We have launched uh, a awareness campaign uh, about uh, online uh, counterfeited online medicine. Uh, in cooperation with our European partners, uh, Sanofi and the ASOP EU. So, uh, we have organized, uh, we have trained the uh, young leaders to be aware uh, of the issues and to raise awareness in their community about this critical issue, which is not only in Europe, but around the world, where you can see that Nowadays, 65% of the online shop uh, are selling fake products online, where we have 35,000 of online pharmacy that are not uh, registered. And this is uh, a huge market because the loss is around $200 billion uh, every year. So uh, we have organized this event in, uh, for the first time in 10 countries. It was uh, on uh, Portugal, Bhutan, Rwanda, 
Algeria, Nepal, Chad, Indonesia, Pakistan, United Kingdom, and Nigeria. Also, we have, we suppose, it's supposed to be on Haiti and in Lebanon, but uh, because of the uh, political situation, we have postponed the event. Uh, now we are looking forward to, to increase uh, the counties in the next version and to, to reach uh, more peoples. So we are looking forward for your support uh, in this. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Sarah, for your great message as well. And maybe next time um, in June next year, we can also have the, the world and the message from the members of the European uh, Parliament to these countries, you know, uh, about this important uh, topic. And actually, how we arrived to this, um, you know, we had an example of one um, young leader who had a problem, actually, in his family by buying a counterfeited product, uh, medicine online. And so it, um, it how we arrived to, to the idea. I would like now to... Uh, to turn uh, to um, to Junior, he's already here from Haiti, and he will speak about something amazing. His national campaign that they are about to launch uh, in Haiti, and I think his background will be very interesting because he first participated at the IGF last year and immediately created this idea. Um, Please support Junior because it will be a little bit difficult for him. He is a French speaker and he really tried hard to, to bring this message today in English. So please be patient as well. Thank you, Junior. Hello, everyone. My name is Junior Saint Fleur from IT. My my professional background is software developer. Since 2016, I'm U5GF ambassador in IT. I organize a lot of activities in IT. Uh, I organized the first Safer Internet Day in IT. This activity was broadcasting TV media. I want to present you now CCN. CCN in French, Campagne de la Citoyenneté Numérique. We realize that, we realize that Asian, Asian people lack information about how the internet works. Therefore, most of benefits of it are not currently received by the Asian that also impact the knowledge and youth development in the country. The Digital Citizen Campaign in English will be held in several targeted places and also via social networks. The DCC brings together a series of activities, conference, roundtable, workshops. For conferences, 2,000 participants are expected. In fact, the general objective is to offer young people and professionals the opportunity to know and understand the digital world. And you can, you can see some photos. I was meeting Mrs. Julie Ward uh, in 2017 and the first safe internet day in Haiti. Thank you. Thank you so much, Junior. Thank you for the great effort. Et merci beaucoup encore de, de ton engagement. Uh, I'll just saying in French, thank you for your great engagement because uh, I was personally amazed and everybody, when he came after the IGF last year and said, well, listen, with our multi-stakeholder community in Haiti, we would like to launch this campaign and, and the message he brought just now. Then uh, we would like to change the continent and go to, um, uh, to Indonesia. And I would like to give floor to our charming Agita with the great projects and amazing community they have there. Agita. Thank you so much, Yulia, for the introductions. Good afternoon, everyone, again. Um, I am Agita from Indonesia, 
Does anyone knows where it is? Yeah? Do you know where it's Indonesia is? Does anyone been to Indonesia? Excellent. Bali? I assume. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, as we know, it, Indonesia is actually the fourth biggest population in the world. That we have 171 million internet users. And then out of 171 million users, there is a 49% that has experience in cyberbullying on social media. So coming from this, of course, uh, one of our, our objectives are following with um, the four mandatory projects that we do it every single year that already being presented by my fellow. In Indonesia, we work very closely with the um, Ministry of Communications and IT. We work closely with the uh, UNICEF Indonesia and the National Empowerment and Children Protection Commissions. That we basically ask and we make an audience together. And we come up and say, um, there is a cybersecurity that is very last paid attention in Indonesia, which is cyberbullying. And why is cyberbullying? It is also part of the cybercrime, but beyond that, cyberbullying is also affecting our mental health. When you are being cyberbullied on social media, when you're being bullied, you feel depressed, you feel anxiety, and we, um, interviewed the psychologist and the lawyer in the same time to basically um, getting to know better about what is exactly the effects of the cyberbullying. Of course, it's a self-doubt, reduce self-esteem, and then the lawyer says, and this is what happened in Indonesia, we don't have currently a specific IT regulations that focus on cyberbullying. So it is very difficult for our legal enforcement to basically make this happen. So at the moment, until today, this is the research from the uh, National Police Agency Indonesia, there is no um, cyberbullying case that is actually being prosecuted. Now, from all this, the biggest number of the cyberbullying types it is not about when, when you are mocking around your friends on a social media, but that is actually revenge porn. At least this is what happened in Indonesia. The lacking of educations, digital literacy, lacking of digital literacy, especially when people is actually living outside from Jakarta, as we are archipelago countries. So it is very difficult for them to get even the access of the internet and getting to knowledge about the internet itself. So what happened when they go online, they have no idea what do's and don'ts on social media. So revenge porn is one of the biggest issues that we're currently having in Indonesia. That is also leading to, this is one of the cases that we interviewed. That's also what happened, uh, the cyberbullying issues also had happened with the second runner up was Miss Indonesia. It also happened with the other three fellows that experiencing cyberbullying in Indonesia. Now, from this, we've been actively having a lot of workshops in Indonesia, creating awareness about the cyberbullying digital literacy. And so far, um, over this one year, we have 12 offline events focusing on cybersecurity, cyberbullying, revenge porn, and then we have reached over 900 young people participating in our events. And beyond that, we have reached over 15,000 online followers on our social media, participating and engaging and asking questions, and then um, sometimes doing it for the online webinar with us as well. So the questions that are raising right now, awareness itself, it is not enough. We need something more concrete. We need something that is actually solving the issues. Because for them, when they're getting bullied, they want to speak with someone, but all their friends is actually bullying them. They, they have the gap to speak with their parents because they have no idea what's going on with their children at school. Um, we come up with the idea to create a project that called Bully.id. Bully.id will be a mobile application that based on um, Apple and uh, iOS that utilizing artificial intelligence and blockchain to help bullying and cyberbullying victims to get the confidential emotional support and legal assistance. 
to basically connect them with a psychologist and a lawyer. In the same time, this is also will help if they're not being bullied or cyber bullied, but they want to create a better online community. There is a feature that is called Be a Whistleblower. So everyone is actually can submitting and through the blockchain technology to the app, which is the bully.id. It is not yet developed, but it is on a development um, process at the moment. So we are pretty much very happy to work with everyone in here if you are interested and in being in the part of the um, AI and the blockchain technology. Lastly, um, this is a little bit about the um, interface, the UI UX design for the mobile app uh, bully.id. We have covered in the uh, featured on the Jakarta Post for Youth IGF Indonesia and Bully.id and also Liputan News Indonesia. The, uh, the main goal for the Bully.id is also achieving the sustainable goals number three, good health and well-being, gender equality and peace, justice and strong institution. In the same time, Indonesian law reforms in terms of cyberbullying. I think that's all from my side, and thank you so much. Don't, don't forget to follow Yutajev ID Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you so much, Agita. How amazing it is to, to see, you know, tangible also and um, great projects that came out from these uh, just young activists at, at, and who became actually uh, leaders in this sphere. Um, uh, I would ask our um, distinguished guests maybe to be a little bit patient. We have very quick two statements. Uh, we would like to bring African youth uh, in the discussion and to show what's going on in Africa. Uh, we are lacking a time a little bit, so be, please be short, but it's important to show you know, what's going on in this continent as well. And then we have um, a, a very great um, cooperation and statement from the Youth IGF Summit as well that we would like to bring bring in and then maybe to have the feedback from our uh, global leaders present here as well. Uh, so please, Innocent, tell us about a little bit African activities in a very summarized manner. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. My name is Innocent Adrico. Uh, I am at the IGF as uh, an ISOC IGF Youth Ambassador. And um, I started my journey in the internet governance ecosystem uh, this year. Uh, in uh, June. June, I had a number of activities in which I coordinated uh, students of Uganda, particularly. We had the Africa Internet Summit and uh, Afrinic 30 Week, uh, which was embedded into the summit. So that is when I all started this. So uh, after the summit, uh, it's when I realized that actually Uganda were lagging behind. Uganda. Uh, uh, the, uh, in our population, more than 70% is of young people. So, meaning more young people are on the internet, but the challenges that uh, they face are really so diverse, like talk of uh, the technical communities that are there to handle infrastructure. The infrastructure alone in rural areas is not that good. So, the, the issues underlining Uganda are so many to the extent that, uh, to some extent, we have to go with uh, priority first, like what is the priority for us to uh, address. Um, in 2018, Uganda introduced a social media tax. Uh, so this tax had an impact on youth because we don't work, we're students. So if I'm paying for data expensively, given my country is a landlocked country, and of course, most landlocked uh, developing countries have higher data rates, so and then you impose a tax, so I have to pay that for data and I have to pay for the tax. Like, it all makes the, the thing so difficult for us. So what have we done to see that some of these challenges are uh, uh, worked on? Um, We've had a series of activities. Uh, immediately after the summit, I was uh, 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 able to participate as an ICANN next gen at ICANN 65. So after that, uh, we came back, we started handling uh, initiatives. Uh, the, one of the initiatives now that we have is called the D Digital Literacy Initiative. Uh, it's, its role is to make sure that uh, uh, the youth are actually educated about uh, issues to do with the digital world and how beneficial it can be to them, why they should be part of internet governance. And then um, in our country, 
we do realize that the stakeholder engagement is not that good, like, like the relationship. So our government is not that that just embraces anything at any time uh, because you're going to find that it's very hard for us to go and uh, talk directly to the government because, I mean, in the Ministry of ICT, there's no direct office that we can go to and be like, you know what, there's this challenge. Maybe we can talk about it and it's very rare for us to meet them. So. We started up a campaign. I have friends from Nigeria. We started up a campaign, and the campaign is called Dear Government. So the Dear Government campaign is purposely to tell governments, if possible, to preach to them their role in this ecosystem, what they're supposed to do, their role, uh, the, the role they're supposed to play in uh, ensuring that there's quality of service uh, on the internet, the role that they're supposed to play to ensure that there's freedom of expression, there are no internet shutdowns, uh, as we've seen a series of them in Africa. So we are trying to see how we can solve one issue at a time. So I encourage all the youth in here to join us in these campaigns, and possibly we can get solutions together. Thank you. Thank you, Innocent, for your, um, for your comments, and actually for the uh, for the kind of feedback on the situation in Uganda. I remember when I've been there uh, as well. Uh, you can feel actually the internet connectivity even uh, issues, so it's good you brought a, a, few, a, a few elements as well. I would like to turn now for a very quick uh, message and um, you know, statement from the Youth IGF Summit. Elizabeth, you have the floor. Um, we, if you can be short, please. Uh, so like this, we can have a feedback from the leaders as well. Thank you. Sure, thank you, Yulia, for giving me the space uh, just very briefly before I start reading out the 11 key messages that we developed in the youth IGF summit uh, we gathered over 100 young people from over 35 countries out of our world regions over a dec over um, a time of more than three months to develop their ideas and their key messages to the IGF um, I will read them because I don't want anything to get lost and I did not draft them myself, so um, I will try to be clear but also be quick. You can find them as well on our website yigf.de. So the first one is, dear governments, nobody wants their utility companies to get hacked. Critical infrastructure that affects lives needs to be protected. Let's have a proactive approach of audits and national strategies alongside proper disclosure of vulnerabilities. The second one is, human intervention must guide AI-driven decision-making to ensure explainability, inclusivity, privacy, and accountability, and the right to appeal. It shall occur whenever the decision rendered had disruptive personal consequences, especially for vulnerable groups such as youth. The third message is, companies should be transparent on their algorithms, data, content, rules and decision making to uphold trust and responsibility. Governments should play a role in enforcement with independent bodies. Users and independent researchers should have easy access to necessary data. Next one is, the child protection online is a priority for us all. We need a universal approach. Collaboration between all stakeholders is crucial for designing effective policies by involving parents, healthcare, and education professionals, as well as children themselves. Next one is, we demand new dynamic cybersecurity strategies with multi-stakeholder approaches that include transparent, adaptive, and human-oriented policies, since laws have direct impacts on our daily lives. As technology evolves, policies must too. On net neutrality. Net neutrality and unrestricted internet access must be guaranteed in order to ensure digital inclusion. To achieve that, governments, companies, and internet service providers must not control data flows, no prioritize services, and must ensure transparency. 
the next one is, we demand platforms to instate multi-stakeholder councils to dismiss illegitimate data points from micro-targeting used for political advertising to diminish the dangers of dis and misinformation on youth participation. Young people face various barriers to participation. It is the responsibility of multi-stakeholder decision makers to overcome these barriers and involve diverse, including underrepresented young people in a meaningful and measurable way in all internet governance processes. Um, Next one is, the stakeholders must strive to incorporate universal ethical principles and standards and develop general competencies framework in digital education. Um, the next one is a short one on facial recognition. That is, without transparency and accountability, there should be no facial recognition. Risks and biases exist and they need to be known. And the last one on platform regulation. Platform regulation is necessary, but in a Goldilocks approach that balances human rights and innovation. Regardless of the platform's purpose, their governance should be multi-stakeholder, inclusive, transparent, and culturally sensitive. Everyone deserves a place at the table. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. And let's give an applause to the, to the message as well. I think now our global leaders have a lot of information. And, um, and thank you. I would like to thank all youth initiatives um, in joining us today uh, for this you know, open forum in the dialogue. So now we, uh, we have to turn to the members of the European Parliament as well, the ICANN board. Uh, maybe you would like to, have a, to give us a feedback to you know, make a statement. I don't know, Matthew, if you would like to the first. So, I've been coming to IGFs for a long time. Um, I think I've only missed two. Um, and um, I don't think, I think this is the first time that I've, I've engaged with this group. And um, that's uh, uh, disappointing to me because I found this incredibly inspirational. Uh, it's easy to go to IGFs and go to all these workshops and hear all these words and be, um, and not come away with anything. But um, when you see that what is happening on the ground and what's being driven by youth, um, that's a whole different level of engagement and a whole different level of commitment, and it's, it's quite fantastic. So the one thing that comes across um, from the, 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 the various projects is they're all about building trust. And I think that's a really important concept now, whether it's talking about cybersecurity, whether it's about cyberbullying, uh, building awareness, um, it's all about building trust and building trust back into a, a system, the internet, that a lot of people have been losing trust in recently. And I think that's also incredibly important. The, the, the activities that reach out to the young to develop cyber hygiene, to develop a, a much greater awareness of what some of the challenges are when they go online, including cyber bullying, is incredibly important as well. And what it does is it puts you in a position of being incredibly well prepared to, to discuss, to become parliamentarians, to become business leaders, and to have the fullest awareness of not only the challenges, which many of these are focused on, but also the opportunities as well. And I think that's, um, that's absolutely essential. And just on the, the recommendations, um, I don't know what the, 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 how you address these, but are these being given in the final sessions tomorrow at all? Are they being re read out in the, the last segments of the day tomorrow? This is mainly the question to you. We have not been given an official spot yet. I, I would really um, commend you to uh, seek a spot in the final sessions and to uh, give these recommendations because I think they are um, fantastically concise to the point and um, I believe that they would resonate greatly with many. Thanks. Maybe we should work on this um, and, and make this happen indeed will be a, a, great, a great moment. Uh, Mrs. Gizzi, would you like to, to give us your feedback and vision? Thank you. Yeah, I, th I think I can also confirm I'm, I'm totally impressed. This is very inspiring. And um, I think what, what we are seeing, because you have a sort of global representation, is that the problems 
and the issues with the internet, but also the chances and the opportunities are pretty much the same. You know, what you've been talking about, uh, literacy, teaching young people how to use the internet, to be aware, how to use it well, this is exactly the same problem we have in Europe, and not only with young people in Europe, we have it even more with older people than with young people, but young people as well. I think less than half the population know how Facebook algorithms work, for example, why you see the content you are seeing. So. It's, it's really, uh, we would need you to come to Germany and teach us what the problems are. Um, uh, Cyberbullying, I was particularly impressed um, by the Indonesian example, I have to say, because we have a huge debate in Germany as well, exactly on the same problem. And it's like I said before, it concerns particularly um, specific groups of the population, young people, women, people who uh, don't, uh, who are not, who are not white in the case of Europe or who don't come from the country they are living in. It's very clear that they are the same people who don't have that much influence and power in the country where they're living. So this is something we have to address and we've been having a huge debate in Europe on how to address this. Um, and it's, it's not, I mean, you all know this, but some people in Europe and also policymakers don't know that the internet and the internet, the same rule apply, the same law applies that uh, applies in the, in, in, in the offline world, but it's not enforced. It's a very clear problem that there are political choices being made that law enforcement is not applied to the internet. So um, if there are offenses and insults or threats, um, we have had really huge amounts of cases in Germany, in the internet police and laws of law enforcement agencies should act on that and uh, psychological support should be provided. So this is still not being taken seriously. And um, I, I would be happy to look into uh, the ideas that were presented about using AI and so on. That's, that's really important to use technology as well. But I think it's very important to make clear in our societies that these are real issues that concern real people and they have to be, um, they have to be tackled exactly as you would tackle somebody stealing your car. I mean, that's, it, this is a lot worse. This is violence. And why is there no focus on this? Um, yeah, the, the, the Ugandan example was very interesting as well. Um, internet shutdowns have been an issue that has been brought up quite a lot in um, the talks we've had in these weeks, and we've brought it up in the European Parliament. Uh, myself, for example, for the Iraq case, and often internet shutdowns are um, a tool used by governments to start doing things that are quite worse and um, to... to to avoid transparency on this on a global scale. So we have to, I think we have to really show that the internet, in the internet and the access to the internet is an important, is a crucial instrument for democracy and make this clear. So um, I think what all this shows that we need a lot more participation by young people and we need a lot, need a lot more participation by people from globally, from the global south especially that are not represented. I'm very open for any suggestions you might have for ideas I could take back to the parliament. And um, I think the rules where you read out were absolutely perfect. This is what we all should do. And maybe we could think as a delegation about uh, creating an opportunity for inviting you to the European parliament and to present them there. So maybe we talk about this bilaterally. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Melcher, would you like to? Yes. Um, thank you so much for your presentations. I think it's important that we do not try to perhaps address problems in society with technical solutions, but that we actually address them as a society. So having content moderation via artificial intelligence is not perhaps the best way of actually solving problems in society. And I think also sometimes the, the technical solutions can be misused uh, if you want to have censorship uh, by governments to crack down on opposition or democratic forces. I think it's, um, it's important to not address technological issues and the lack of knowledge about how the internet works as only a youth issue or as something that should be separate from general education. I think it's really important that we insist on having an understanding of the internet and how the market forces and the business models there work 
as a part of our general education and not something sort of extracurricular for the specially interested people. Uh, it gives me a lot of hope listening to all of your projects and your engagement. And I hope that you will uh, make the leap from being interested in the technology and the regulation of that and perhaps becoming politicians at some point because we, uh, we need politicians that understand how the internet works and how technology works because otherwise we can't have the legislation that reflects how the tech and the internet works. And without that we will be, we'll be having regulation that is, not applied, that is not applicable to the world that we live in today. And also that you are aware of your digital rights makes me optimistic that you will not accept government shutdowns of the internet and that you will be actively fighting against this. And as Alexandra said, let's try and figure out how that we can join together in this fight. Thank you. Thank you so much for your standing. And we also need to give an applause to our leaders. Um, I think we, we have, we, we might take with us a few messages and recommendations, actually, that you already like uh, summarized. Um, and um, I don't know if we still have time we, for one question, maybe. Would you be able to stay five more minutes? Do you have one question um, eventually? Please, you have a mic. Please identify yourself. Please go. go in. Really, it's not a question. Okay. So it can be a statement as well, but a short one, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, there is someone that uh, want to say a question? No? Okay, can I speak? Yes. Okay. Yes, please, we hear you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm Alessia from Italy. Uh, I'm here with a large group of other young people. Uh, can you raise your hand, uh, guys? Okay, here we are. We are in uh, IGF uh, as members uh, of Internet Society Italy and uh, members uh, of Generazione Y, in English uh, Y Generation. Uh, it's a local uh, association from Sicily. It's very difficult for young people to uh, express themselves in this context. Maybe the secret is uh, to find someone uh, who believes in you, even if you are young. And we were very lucky to know the reality of Internet Society Italy and to meet Stefano Trampi and Laura Abba. They gave us uh, the opportunity to talk in different national conferences and events, and they gave us the opportunity to be here today. For the next years, we have planned different events connected by the activity of Internet Society Youth Observatory. And, uh, we would like to invite you in our events in Italy. If you want to collaborate with us, uh, we will be very happy about this. All right, thank you for your statement. I think the members of the European Parliament and the global leaders, they said already they are very open in collaborating with, uh, with the young people. Uh, I would like to give a very big applause to all of you. Thank you for all youth initiatives and joining us. Thank you to the uh, young leaders uh, for their presentations and particular thank you for accepting to hear and to be here uh, today with us, um, uh, uh, the members of the European Parliament and the ICANN board. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I would just um, maybe uh, ask you afterwards to stay two minutes for a global photo and uh, we will take two recommendations. The role of the young in, in building trust and as well uh, the message that the European Parliament, if I understood correctly, um, is might be happy in supporting the global, uh, the youth from Global South to bring them uh, to the IGF and internet governance sphere. So thank you so much and a big applause to all of you. Thank you.